So, can you tell me who you are and what the project is? Hello, I am Toby Borland and this is a RepRap. It's part of an open hardware project. I guess it would be the RepRap project, which is short for Self-Replicating Rapid Prototyping Machine. As Dr. Adrian Boyer from University of Bath started this all off, but a whole bunch of inspired people have taken it to the to the technological heights you see today. <laughs> Once it starts coming out the bottom, I'll be so much happier. Right. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So it could be my own modification that's kind of right. caused it to not work so fantastically well right now. So what, what else can I say about it? Um, it's here today because I wanted to kind of... It's a really good example of open hardware, open collaboration. You've got a bunch of people, it's not a company. A lot of people came together and designed this and more or less improve the design between them. So it's a kind of, it's not really crowdsourcing, it really is open hardware. What's always struck me is all, I've always wondered, why aren't there more, you know, you've got the open source software movements, you've got the whole Linux community, you've got Apache, you've got a lot of really successful projects. How come none of it translates to real machine or created objects? You know, how come there's less of this sort of... Uh, real objects around us every day that are designed by people for people without necessarily, you know, companies and, you know, people going out and determining what the next great thing is going to be. People just making stuff for themselves. So this is a good example of that. Why is it here in Reboot Britain? Well, I'm thinking open could be the way to go for future-proof formats and also when you're looking at rebooting Britain, it's a case of, it's not just one island in the sea. The community that built this are all over the world, and I suspect that rebooting Britain will involve the rest of the world. Anyway, that's about it. And you had you had something to say about open open source in terms of the in instantiation of this kind of electronics thing, but there isn't that much software around. There's a kind of gap there in um, that sense. Yeah, in well, less so with electronics. My, where I've really found a hole is in mechanical engineering designs. My own background, I'm a mechanical design engineer. Uh, well, I was before I got involved in this kind of stuff. I still am, I guess. And uh, software, to a much lesser extent, I suspect it's because of the modularity. You've got companies who build things. They want... When you're a design engineer, you want something that works like it says in the spec sheet. And it r works really well with um, electronic components. You don't have to be a software design engineer. Once you can read the spec sheet, you can more or less put the circuits together. So with electronics, there is a little bit of revolution happening. Like this thing's Arduino powered. That's a really good example of an incredibly cheap platform. It doesn't have a massive amount of memory, but for your average project, it works just fine. Not only that, it plugs into the USB. It works. You don't have the wires that snap off and trail around. And uh, the compiler is rock solid, which is more than can be said for other <laughs> chips. So... That's not, so, that's not such a badly served market. I guess my own particular evangelistic gospel is about uh, mechanical engineering, CNC machining, to a lesser extent rapid prototyping. I suspect that design for engineering is a talent out there. It used to be in people's garden sheds. It used to be in back. It used to be taught in schools. It's kind of gone. That's why 3D printing's taken off because you don't have to know how to machine something to create it. However. You can't make your engine out of rapid prototype plastic. It wouldn't last too long. All, I guess maybe I've got some Marxist tendencies where I think, bring the means of production to the people. And in this case, it's, uh, you know, like, allow people to program the machines themselves so they create what they need so they can experiment with stuff. The cost of producing something using modern manufacturing equipment has dropped so far simply because companies have the same aims as the individuals, make one source really cheaply. It's really cheap now. Well, it's cheaper than ever before, should I say, to make stuff that is just totally unique. Bringing it within the, the realms, within the price range of your average Joe, I'm looking at where do people make things that are useful for themselves? You know, where do people step back and go, okay, well, I need this. Nobody's, nobody else makes it. What does it take for me to make it? And what does it take? And that's the issue. That's one of the things I'm studying. And this... Now, coming back to, I think I'm coming full circle, hopefully. This is a good example of where people have gotten off their ass and, and thought, okay, this is how we do it. It's wonderful. Thank you very much.